Hello everyone and welcome to another game you guys requested as it's uh, just a brilliant, brilliant attacking game. It is uh, uh, from the match Uzbekistan versus Armenia and it is Jabal Kirsindaro versus Samuel, uh, Samuel uh, Tersahakian. Uh, it's uh, a game from Board 3 and it's, uh, well, it's, it, it's incredible. Uh, you guys will enjoy it, so let's dive straight into it and then we are going to discuss the standings, uh, what is happening with the... Uh, with the Olympiad and what uh, can still happen with two more rounds to go. So it's uh, Cinder with the white pieces and he opens with pawn to e4. Uh, we have c5 by Samuel going for the Sicilian defense, knight to f3, d6 and now pawn to d4. We have captures, captures, so very standard stuff here. Knight to f6, knight to c3 and everyone's favorite, the knight of Sicilian, pawn to a6. Uh, and here we have bishop to d3. Uh, we have pawn to e5, chasing away the knight, knight back to e2, and now bishop to e7. Uh, we have castles, and now bishop to e6, uh, and pawn to f4. Again, all been played before, uh, e captures on f4, bishop captures, and now continuing development with knight to c6. Uh, not really, uh, in, not bishop captures on f4, uh, in this game knight captures on f4 was played, we have knight to c6 and now pawn to b3, uh, preparing to fianchet to the dark square bishop on this diagonal, and uh, there is a game that reached this exact same position from last year's Grand Chester in Croatia, uh, in a game between Jordan Pomforest and uh, Ivan Chadic where knight to e5 was played, but here we have castles and it is now as of move 11 that we have a completely new game. So uh, here uh, Sindro continues development, bishop to b2, we have knight to e5 now and queen to e1, with uh, the queen now having access to f2 to g3 to h4 and maybe even an attack against the black king if the bishops come alive uh, somehow. Uh, so here rook to e8, you could also capture the bishop but uh, for the moment this bishop is a pawn, you don't really gain anything by capturing this and your knight here is an excellent piece so this would be uh, pretty pointless. So rook to e8 and now king to h1. Always a useful move, not allowing any uh, future queen to b6 or bishop c5 ideas. Uh, we have bishop to f8 now, preparing g6 and bishop to g7 to strengthen the black king's position. And rook to d1 now. We have pawn to g6 and pawn to h3, taking away the g4 square from uh, so many black pieces. Uh, rook to c8 and now queen to f2. So nicely continuing development and here you can see uh, that uh, Jaokir has uh, a plan of bringing the knight over to b6 and there's really not all that much black can do about this if he doesn't want to uh, ruin his position too much. So bishop g7, knight to a4 going after this plan, queen e7 and now knight to b6. Attacking this rook, we have rook to c6 and now comes a move that I really, really enjoy. It is uh, one of those moves that are just uh, extremely aesthetically pleasing, and that is bishop to d4. Just uh, centralizing the bishop, the bishop now here uh, slices the entire board. Uh, it's, it, it's, it's a monster bishop, and um, uh, it really belongs here due to the rook now being on c6, preventing the knight from coming to c6. So as long as the rook is here, your bishop is on d4. So queen to c7 now, putting pressure on the knight, but the knight is already sufficiently defended, so no worries there. Queen to g1, opening up the f file for the rook, and now comes queen to e7. Uh, this is basically uh, a moment where uh, Samuel has to make a decision where he wants to finally capture on d3 and go into this forcing line. Uh, because queen to g1 does allow knight captures on d3 and it wins a pawn regardless of uh, how white recaptures. Point is that if knight captures on d3, if you play c captures on d3 to have the very strong center, then knight captures on e4 becomes an option. Uh, and now uh, what is happening here? We are attacking the bishop here and once we eliminate the bishop then we can pick up the knight. The knight is defended by the bishop and by the queen. So if you capture the knight, of course, bishop captures on d4, queen captures and queen captures on b6, we will always uh, uh, win this pawn. So maybe he was afraid of something like queen f6 and then maybe something, I don't know. It, it doesn't seem like white has all that much and that white can uh, create some sort of an attack, but uh, it, it's definitely a possibility. Maybe with something like knight to h5, you sacrifice the knight because checkmate is being threatened, maybe rook f3, rook to g3. So there are ideas and of course, uh, 
he, he thinks that maybe Cinderella has this prepared. Uh, another thing, after knight captures on d3, you can play rook captures on d3, uh, but it's not much better. Not just knight captures on e4, no, knight f to d5, attacking the queen, and if bishop captures, knight captures, again attacking the queen, for example, queen a5, pawn to c4. Again, a possibility, uh, the variation ends here. Uh, it's, it's a pretty equal position. Black will always be up a pawn. So uh, th those were uh, some of the options if he wants to capture on d3. But he wants to keep everything in the game. He continues with queen to e7. And now pawn to c4, just strengthening the uh, position, getting rid of the, 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 the pawn on c2. And knight f to d7 now, at, uh, offering a trade of knights. So knight b to d5, now attacking the queen. And the queen to h4. Uh, now the queen is uh, very active here, so bishop f2, kicking away the queen, queen g5, and now bishop to e3, threatening some very nasty discoveries. Queen back to h4, bishop to f2, queen to h6. Now Samuel not interested in repeating the position, he wants to continue playing bishop to g3, and now we have queen to g5. Again, playing with the queen, harassing the bishop on g3, much stronger was g5 here. It's a classical game, so we can show a few more lines. The uh, point is that now, uh, once the knight captures uh, on, a, on e6, we recapture and we uh, force this knight back. Knight b4 now attacks the rook, rook c to c8, and the game continues with, uh, uh, with, with good chance for both sides. However, here after queen to g5, this is where things get extremely interesting. Queen to f2. Now with ideas of bishop to h4, uh, attacking the black queen. So queen back to d8, which was the original plan, and now pawn to a4. We have rook back to c8, now preparing to bring the knight over to c6, and now bishop back to c2. Now you are not capturing this bishop, and um, uh, Javakir has a very, very interesting uh, plan of how to get this bishop to come alive. So rook Rook to f8, now preparing to maybe uh, open up the position with f5, now comes knight to e3, adding a defender at the f5 square, knight to c5, and now comes the move uh, that you guys have seen in the thumbnail, and that is knight to f5, and this is a brilliant move, uh, just a spectacular idea, uh, strongest move recommended by the engine, and it really shows how, how strong white's position is, and even the bishop on c2 has some sort of a function. So your options are to capture the knight, which is strongest, and to maybe play knight captures on e4. Uh, this is if you want to accept the piece and go uh, and you know start defending, and this is if you want to keep material balance. So if you go knight captures on e4, bishop captures, bishop captures on f5, we're still going to open up the black king, uh, go knight d5, and well, you haven't really achieved anything. If black is up a pawn, but with the king completely wide open like this, uh, it's very hard to imagine black surviving this. So after knight to f5, we have g captures on f5. Uh, Samuel accepts the peace sacrifice. We have e captures on f5 and the bishop back to d7. And now comes knight to h5. And this is a uh, uh, knight to h5 is the uh, a simple way to, to go for the win. Uh, I will show a forcing line as this is what we also do on the channel. Rook captures on d6. Uh, now preparing f6 is also very, very strong. If queen to e7 unpinning, now we just play f6, we sacrifice the rook here, and after queen captures, pawn captures here, rook f to e8, and now knight to h5. So this is the line, uh, Javakir just put the knight on h5 first, so he can, uh, you know, skip a few moves, uh, but uh, by doing so he allowed this f6 defensive idea in that variation. So here, for example, f5. Uh, to prevent knight to f6 check, but now we just trade everything. Bishop captures, 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 and again, there's no defense against knight f6 check. If knight d7, uh, you still just eliminate one of the knights, and now you are threatening queen to f7, the knight was defending f7, and if knight captures, then knight f6 check, and the position just falls apart. Captures here with check, king f8, knight to d7 will be a double check, and also a checkmate. So that's in the position. However, knight to h5 is a much, much simpler idea as it threatens b4. I know you guys will think I'm, I'm you know, joking because I always mention the b4 move, uh, but uh, you can see that the knight has no squares. Once b4 is played, uh, the knight is just uh, lost. And uh, again, if you try to stop that, then f6 is coming, then it's game over. So here f6 has to be played. Uh, and now pawn to b4 just wins the knight. So here black has to decide how to give back the knight. He decides to give it back by knight to c to d3. 
uh, at least uh, white will have to give up the light square bishop, so bishop counters here, bishop counters on a4, attacks the rook, rook to d2, and now bishop to h6, attacking the rook, uh, hoping that the rook moves so we can capture the bishop here, but just bishop to f4. Countering the dark square bishop, we have captures, captures, now going for that e6 square and another fork, rook to f7, and now pawn to c5. Beautifully played, just opening up the uh, the D file for the rook, of course, if you capture then all sorts of nasty discoveries become possible. Uh, so here just knight captures on D3 and rook captures on D3. We have bishop back to C6 and now rook captures on D6, completely busting open the position. Queen to F8 and now knight to E6, attacking the black queen, queen H6, now comes rook F to D1. And uh, this is incredible, rook f to d1 just cold-bloodedly allowing queen captures on h3 because even if you play this just king g1 and there's no uh, move that you can make here, uh, the queen is attacked, and once the queen moves rook 1 to d3, now the rook comes into the attack. Uh, job after playing this uh, with, um, uh, with absolute uh, clean, just, uh, you know, perfection. So rook to e8, and now comes king to h2, not allowing queen captures on h3 anymore, and leaving black without a move. Rook f to e7 was played, now rook 1 to d4, going for, for the attack. We have king to h8, and now rook to h4, attacking the black queen. Queen to c1, and now queen to d4, threatening queen captures on f6. Rook to f7, defending, and now rook to d8. And it was in this position on move 49 that um, Samuel uh, resigned the game, as there is nothing more to be done here. Uh, whatever you play doesn't really matter. Let's say you try queen e1, because well, all of your pieces are pinned. Uh, we, we can just counter, captures, captures, and now rook e4. We kick away the queen, and then we go for the bishop, and that's it. Let's say queen c1, queen, queen to d8, and there is no defense against queen captures uh, bishop on e8. Uh, so yeah, really an incredible attacking game by Jawakir Sindarov, a board 3 for Uzbekistan. Uh, this is what happened on all the other boards, uh, if you guys are interested. So you can see Abdul Satarov drew against Sargisian on board 1, on board 2 Yakubo drew against Velkumyan. Uh, on board 3 we've seen this, how Sindarov defeated Tersahakyan and the Bakidov defeated uh, Ho Hovanisian uh, on board 4. So uh, Uzbekistan just crashes through Armenia and is now are now the sole leaders of the Chess Olympia 2022. Uh, there are two more runs to go. Armenia and India too, led by Gukash, uh, are, are one point behind, so anything can still happen. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's the game. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Really a spectacular, spectacular attacking game. Uh, I would like to thank um, uh, Natara Jandringasami, uh, Kububis, Joshua Hadley, uh, Prasanna uh, Krishnamurti, and uh, Michael Kalber for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you for watching, and I will see you soon, continuing the coverage of the Olympiad uh, until it finishes. Uh, so thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day.